Hello everyone, my name is Igor and in this video we're going to be installing the ported Planums, Planum Spacer and the GTR injectors on my 2005 Nissan 350Z with the DE engine. <laughs> So the first thing you would need to do in order to replace all of those, I also didn't mention we're going to replace the spark plugs, we're going to have everything disassembled. So we need to take the top platinum off, this is pretty much all, I believe it's 12 mil bolts and a couple of nuts over here, also a couple of the wire connections and the hoses, so we're going to disconnect all of those. And then I'm gonna show you when, how I have it out, how to get to the bottom portion of the plenum. So I have my top plenum off, it is right here, with just a couple of hoses here and there, and a whole bunch of bolts and a couple of nuts. So right now we got access to the middle plenum. I'm gonna carefully remove this gasket after I take this off. So as far as I understand, I will need to remove this middle plate, remove the gasket, and I believe this is the only bolts which are holding down the this plenum right here. Also, there is a couple of hoses, I see. So, same thing. I'm going to remove it and then get back to you guys. So, I've got the mid plenum off. It's over here. There is, we can see a little bit of blow-by. But, in general, it's pretty clean, actually. I expected it to be more nasty than it is. This is our fuel rails. With the injectors, I'm gonna replace in the bottom plenum as well because I've got the ported one. So I'm gonna remove the fuel rails right now and then I'm gonna remove the bottom plenum. And to do that, it's pretty straightforward. A couple of bolts and nuts holding down the plenum itself. But before you remove the plenum, you need to remove the fuel rail. And to do that, it looks like unplugging the uh, injector plugs and then a couple of bolts holding down the rail itself and then I would have to unhook this connection I think over here and that's it okay so I have the bottom plenum out it looks a little bit gross inside here so I'm gonna clean it out and then I'm gonna cover those ports to the valves and I want to just pretty much like brush and vacuum just as much as I can over here because it's pretty dusty and uh, since I have it all open might as well just get it a little nicer than it is right now. I've cleaned up a little bit those intakes. Right now I'm gonna cover this intake hose with tape and vacuum a little bit of all of this gunk. Okay so it probably doesn't seem like I did much cleaning it up but I picked up quite a bit of loose dust and grime so and before doing that I closed out those intake holes and right now I'm gonna swap out the injectors on the fuel rails so I've got my fuel rails set up over here I'm gonna get the injectors real quick and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that okay so here is the GTR injectors they're denser injectors I believe they're OEM so I replaced already three and right now I'm going to show you how exactly am I doing this. To remove the injector there is this clip is holding in it on the fuel rail so we just spread it out a little and take it off and then you just pull the injector out of the rail. Be careful some fuel might be left in fuel rail and it may splash so be aware you got the old fuel injector out getting the new one out of the package so i've got the new one over here i'm gonna grab some of the all rain silicon loop and just put a tiny bit on the all rain Okay. and then we want to press it in not all the way because if we press it all the way we won't be able to put the uh, this clip on which holds it in place so you put it in just enough 
and then we put this mount on okay and this is how you put the new injector in now i have two more to go okay so i've got injector swapped out right now this is the gtr injector is on the fuel fuel rail uh, next thing i'll do i'm probably gonna swap out the spark plugs real quick quick rundown on what am i doing to replace the spark plugs so all you need to do is to get access for your coil unplug it unscrew it take it off then you use the spark plug head to take off your spark plug then you're taking the new one and you want to gap it to whatever spec you need to in my case admin tuning recommends gapping this spark plugs to 0 0.03 so that's what i'm gonna do to do that i have this little fuel gauge so i'm adjusting this electrode using this i'm just bending it pretty much up or down and i want to make sure that my 0.3 gauge fits very snug and my next one thicker one 0.35 won't fit so I you know it's somewhere in between between 0.3 and 0.34 so that's uh what i'm what i'm doing and then when you have your spark plug gap you carefully put it in and you just tighten it by hand and then uh, you can torque it to spec i believe on disease the spec is between 17 and 25 foot pound of torque but i'm just doing it by hand somewhere not very tight but tight enough you don't want to strip it because head is aluminum so dreads so over there aluminum as well if you're gonna strip it you're you're gonna have a bad time so just be careful and mindful okay so you just seen me installing the spark plugs and right now um if you watched my previous video i've mentioned that i will be installing the corded uh, lower and upper plenums so right now i have my original plenum off and I want to do side-by-side -side comparison to see what exactly guys at the VQ Power Boys doing. So we're going to start with the lower part of the plenum. So this is the OEM not touched one. And this is the ported one. So it looks like they bore out these runners a little bit unfortunately i didn't have anything anything to measure with so to see like actual difference in size by the eye it looks like the openings are got a little bit bigger and i assume they took off quite a bit inside let's see from the other side Yeah, so pretty much the same deal over here. They made the openings a little bit bigger. So yeah, this is kind of noticeable difference. Then over here, I assume they've the like the main point of doing this. They smooth out the surface inner surface of the plenum so it's all like smooth and i assume it got a little bit deeper than the original one we can see a little bit of difference over here versus over here so I could take it off a little bit and this one the mid piece same thing so in the original looks like this and they smoothed it out over here and made this runners a little bit bigger so yeah, this is how it looks. I've got the gaskets, the brand new ones. So right now I'm gonna install everything back on a car. Okay, so wanted to mention some something which I don't really like about these ported plenums. Uh, one thing, none of the surfaces were ready uh, to install. I had to go with the scotch bright and a little bit of the same sandpaper uh, in some places to get it ready to be installed. Also, the places where you put the injectors on, all dirty and gunked up on this plenum. 
everything else is fine. And this one, same thing. I just went over with the scotch bright to make the surface looks nice. But another thing, inside the runner, there is still some gunk, some dust, sand, I don't know, whatever it is, uh, inside the runner. So you can see when they they reached over as far as they can, but after that, on that band, it's all pretty dirty in there. I was hoping for the price you paint that they would at least uh, clean it out. Same thing over here. It's all a little gross, needed to be prepared. Same thing, all of the surfaces need to be gone through with the scotch bright or sandpaper or brush or something to get it ready to get it installed and same thing on this one over here as you can see all of the surfaces they're pretty rough so i was hoping when you pay 60 600 dollars or i don't remember exactly how much i paid uh that they would at least do those uh but yeah just wanted to mention that. Okay, so I've cleaned all of the surfaces, put the gaskets in, the new gaskets uh, to the both heads. And right now we need to torque down this lower plenum or the collector, it's also called. There is a sequence and the steps in torquing this down. So there is four bolts and four nuts. We are gonna torque it down all to the five pound feet of torque. We're gonna start with this bolt right here then it's gonna be bolt number two number tr number three number four and then knot number five six seven and eight like i said first of all we're gonna turn it down in this sequence to the five foot pound of torque and then we're gonna do exact same thing to the 19 foot pound of torque Okay, so that was five foot pound of torque. Right now, we're gonna set it to 19. Okay, so we have it torqued down. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the fuel rails with the new injectors in. I've torqued down the lower plenum, as you just saw. And right now, I've put in the fuel rails with the injectors. It's been held in by this four bolts. I'm gonna torque them down to the 19 foot pound of torque as well. Same way I did with the collector. And I'm gonna hook up the fuel feed and I'm gonna prime the system to see if there is any leaks. And we wanna catch that if there is any leaks before we put the other intakes on because we won't be able to see. And if there is a leak, uh, there is a high chance of getting caught on fire, which nobody wants. So that's kind of must do when replacing or just messing with the fuel rails and injectors. I've tightened everything up, connected the battery. Right now I'm gonna turn the car on, but I won't start. I just want the fuel pump to kick in and I'm gonna see for any leaks. I'm gonna prime it up a couple more times just to make sure, but I didn't see any leaks so far. Okay, so no fuel leaks anywhere. Uh, we're gonna go to the next step. It's installing the middle uh, section of the plenum. And then we're gonna install the plenum spacer. I've got my gasket weighed down between the bottom collector and the mid section of the, of the plenum. Also, I've put down this gasket on top and pushed it in with this centerpiece. And right now we're gonna torque this back, these six bolts which are holding down this midsection to the bottom collector. We're gonna tighten it down to the nine foot pound of torque. And there is also a sequence in which you're supposed to tighten those bolts. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got to do that right now. And the next thing, since I'm going to be running the plenum spacer, I'm going to put down the plenum spacer 
another gasket and then I'm gonna cover uh, all of this with the top planner. So I've put down the spacer, I've put down the gasket, which is supplied by Z1 and Planum spacer kit. And then right now I'm gonna put down the top part of the Planum and then following the instructions provided with the spacer, I'm gonna use the bolts and nuts, I mean bolts and washers provided. And also I'm gonna reuse some of the OEM ones. I'm gonna cover it in the next step. Okay, so we're gonna follow this instruction from the Z1, gonna open it up. So we already finished the step five, which is place the new plenum gasket on top of the Z1 plenum spacer. We did that and lower plenum back into position, assure that gaskets remain aligned and do not slip out of the position. That seems to be okay as well. So we're gonna go to the bolt and their sequence and position. So step number six in this instruction, it says hand thread all bolts and ensure that they do not cross thread. So replace bolts number one, three and six. We're gonna look at this picture right here and bolts one, three and six. This supplied M6 70 millimeter bolts with M6 washers with bonded seals. So here is all of the hardware provided with the kit. Okay, so I've got the tape measure just to be sure. So we need the M6 70 millimeter bolts. This looks like this is it. And we're gonna be using the M6 washers with uh, bonded seals. So this is it. I'm gonna take the bolt out and we're gonna take the washers out. So I've got all of the three bolts right here with those washers with bonded seals. I believe this is the proper orientation of how to put in the washer with the seal to the bottom. One, three, and six. This is these guys right here. Putting them down and gonna hand Thread them in. Reuse factory bolts from holes 1, 3, and 6, these ones right here, for bolt holes 2, 5, and 4. So 2, 5, and 4, this ones right here, we're gonna reuse the bolts which were in these holes. Okay, so then they say for bolts 7, 10, 11, 13, 16, and 18, please use the supplied M6 and 3 millimeter bolts. So it's 7, 10, 11, 13, 16, and 18 bolts which are supplied. For bolts 8, 14, and 15, reuse OEM M6 25 millimeter bolts. Tighten all bolts to 44-61 inch pound feet of torque. Pound square inches. Inch. It's not foot pound of torque. Right here. So I'm going to convert this real quick to see what foot pound of torques it is. We need to tighten all the bolts approximately to 5, between 4 and 5 pound feet of torque. So I'm going to set it to 4 just to be on the safe side. Tighten it all down using this sequence right here. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and by the numbers all around. I was taking for hole nine, it says reuse the OEM bolt. So we're gonna reuse the OEM bolt for hole nine. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is installing the big throttle body. So here is the 75 mil throttle body I'm gonna be using. It comes with two plates, one I already installed, and three O-rings for good sealing between the conversion plates and platinum in the throttle body, and some hardware and adapter harness as well. So how it works, we put in one adapter plate 
on on a plenum then another adapter plate on top of this to convert the bolt pattern to the new throttle body and then throttle body on top of it so i have already started to mock up the first adapter plate between the this adapter plate and the plenum i have the o-ring installed there is groove in the plate itself where the o-ring sits so it's in there and Right now I'm gonna tighten it down and assemble everything. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna put you guys down for the time lapse. A few moments later. Okay, so just just a quick update. I went and finished up all of the stuff with the throttle body. I've connected the wiring, throttle body all set. And as you can see, I already hooked up the new intake from the Z1. It's the race intake, the difference between race and street. That on the street over here, right where the map sensor is, the diameter of this tube is exactly the same as the factory one. And I went ahead and installed this intake and I ran in one of the issues that I had my oil cooler mounted over here and with this new setup the air filter was getting on away where the lines were so I took it off the oil cooler and I ordered the 90 degree AM fittings so I can tuck it up and hopefully uh, keep the oil cooler at the same location so while i'm waiting on the a and alliance to get in i'm gonna do some other stuff all right so this is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching if you liked this video please hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one stay tuned